Hello, and welcome to episode eight of the Low Back Pain Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Grant Elliott with Rehab Fix Online Low Back Program. And today's topic is how you can improve your disc health and your disc height while sitting, after a long day of sitting, after a long day of sitting at work. You can improve your disc health and your disc height. So today we are referencing a research article from 2014. The name of this article is Lumbar Disc Changes Associated with Prolonged Sitting. This is out of the Journal of PM&R by Billy et al. And this is really fascinating because so many people are led to believe that sitting is the devil, right? Oh my gosh, sitting is terrible. Sitting is the new smoking. And I've talked about this before time and time again, that that's not true. Uh, Sitting is not bad. It's how long you sit. Just like standing is not bad, but you talk to people who stand in the same position for four plus hours, they don't want to stand anymore. Standing does not feel good, right? So sitting isn't bad or good. Standing isn't bad or good. It's how long you're sitting or how long you're standing. Just like if you were holding any position for too long, it would start to feel bad, right? But specifically sitting, a lot of people are working remote nowadays. A lot of people have you know, t- typical office jobs where they're sitting most of the day. And a lot of people struggle with low back pain and, sp- and spine pain in general, spine stiffness after a long day at work. And they want to figure out what can I do to improve my disc health? Because, you know, I have a friend that had a disc herniation and they were told they had to have, you know, this $15,000 surgery and it didn't even help and things I hear every week. Uh, and I, I got to figure out how to keep my back healthy at work. Well, there's many, many things that we can do. I prescribe my clients many movements that they can do simply in their chair, at work, in the break room, uh, whatever. These are some specifics here. But if we want to focus on one extremely powerful thing that highlights everything that I push, which is movement, the power of movement, this article certainly accomplishes that. So what they did in this article is they took two groups of people, all right, and they assessed on one day, they were going to sit the whole day without any movement breaks. And they were assessing an MRI of their spine at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. And they were looking at the changes in the disc height, in the disc health, right? Because disc height is associated with disc health, although they're not always one and the same. People can have, you know, very, uh, I hate to use this term, but collapsed or thinning discs. That's the terminology, the terminology that you normally hear on MRIs or by doctors. <laughs> that is the terminology that is used. I do not believe that is the terminology we should use, but that is the terminology that is used. And so we think, okay, if the disc is thin and not feeling good, then it must be unhealthy. That's just traditionally thought. Now, if we can maintain uh, height through the disc, then great. You know, that's that's obviously a good thing that we would like to do. It's hydrated and uh, well-nourished. Fantastic. So that's the, the general approach with this study. So they took an MRI at the beginning of the day, sat continuously, and we're at the end of the day. They found that the most significant disc height changes occurred at the L4, L5 disc, which is one of the most commonly herniated discs. The most commonly herniated disc in your back, in your lower back specifically, are L4, L5, and L5, S1. Most common ones. So L4, L5 was found to have the greatest change in height. Okay? So in the individuals who did not move the whole day, from the beginning to the end of the time frame of the study, they saw a significant decrease in disc height in the L4, L5. It was not as hydrated. It was not as juicy with fluid and nutrients that it might like to be. Now, what they then proceeded to do is a day two protocol, is instead of sitting continuously throughout the day, they implemented a 20 second, yes, only 20 seconds, a 20 second movement protocol every 15 minutes, only 20 seconds. What did this 20 seconds consist of? This 20 seconds consisted of standing up, bending bending forward for five seconds, bending backwards for five seconds, bending to the side for five seconds, and bending to the other side for five seconds. So flexion, extension, lateral flexion both ways, five seconds. And then sitting back down and resuming work. Simple as that. How much does 
20 minutes or 20 seconds rather, take away even 20 minutes, 20 minutes isn't gonna take much out of your day, but 20 seconds every 15 minutes, is that gonna hurt your productivity? No, not one bit, but guess what they found? If these individuals implemented a 20 second movement break every 15 minutes throughout the duration of their work, that when they compared the MRIs in that situation, MRI at the beginning, MRI at the end, that that same decrease in disc height that occurred at the L4, L5 did not happen. So when individuals took a 20 second movement break every 15 minutes, their L4, L5 disc did not thin as much, did not become as dehydrated, did not lose the nutrients in the water within it. How astonishing is that? It's crazy. Well, it shouldn't be astonishing because movement's medicine, right? But it just goes to show the power of movement. So it's not like you need some crazy magic pill to rehydrate your discs and get your discs healthy again. All you need is a little bit of movement, right? Simple as that, 20 second movement break. And that further reinforces the fact that I always say it's not the position you're in, it's how long you're in that position. Because this study did not control the position of their sitting, right? They let these individuals sit however they wanted, all right? That was not the issue. So sitting is sitting. Sure, you can shift positions frequently while you're sitting, which is obviously ideal. We want to shift positions as much as possible. But they did not control the way these individuals sat. So it's not like it was a significant difference if someone was sitting nice and tall or rounding forward. Didn't make a difference. Their disc still thin by the end of the day, okay? So it just goes to show that you want frequent movement. You want to move as frequently as possible. That is what is going to help your body the most. And the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the study from 2014. So could there be even more to add to this to get even more results? Certainly. If that's helping your disc height, you know, it's helping other things. Now, I recommend a little bit more throughout the day than just this. You're not gonna fix your low back by just bending forward, bending backwards and side to side for just 20 seconds throughout the day. Is it gonna help? Yes. Is it gonna build your capacity? Yes. Is it gonna help your spine stiffness throughout the day? Yes. It absolutely will do all of these things. Now, if you are suffering from a low back issue, if you have significant low back pain, significant hip pain, radiation down the leg, numbness, tingling, it is not gonna be a solution for that. That would be a very positive lifestyle habit to change, is just adopting a habit of frequent movement. That's what all of my clients do. They all adapt a habit and a lifestyle of frequent movement. It's part of it. But there would be additional movements that you would probably need, not probably, that you must implement to address those more significant problems in combination with these frequent movement habit and lifestyle changes. That is just part of living a healthy life with no joint pain, with no spine pain, with no disc issues or nerve issues. It's just part of it. It comes with the territory. So if we think that something so simple can change the way our discs are, can improve our spine health so significantly, then imagine the position you would be if you made that slight modification in combination with some additional specific movements to work on even more areas. Maybe work on your mid back, your hips, or you know, even more specific movements for your exact low back issue. It would be astronomical, the changes that it would make, right? It would be life changing. And if you are struggling with low back pain, and you're having a hard time finding someone to help you with this, it's about time that you made a change. And it's about time you invest in something that is going to get you the results that you're looking for. So make this change in your life. Add in these frequent movement lifestyle habits. Make the difference. And if you need a little bit more, then reach out for help. Shoot me an email, shoot me a DM through Instagram, and let's figure out what you might be missing that you could add to this helpful routine so that you could truly learn how to fix your low back, keep it feeling good in the workplace, and make sure by the end of the day, you're not limping out of the office, and instead, you're walking out of there, chest forward, chin high, feeling good, ready to go to the gym, have a fantastic workout, tons of energy left to go home and hang out with your wife or your husband and play with the kids. That's how I want you to feel. That's how I want you to live your life. So if you need help 
I am here, I'd love to help you, but I encourage you to find someone who's invested in your success. If you enjoyed this podcast, if you learned something, then please rate, review, and subscribe if you feel as though this was helpful and I deserve it. And please share this with a friend that is struggling with low back pain that is looking for relief and needs help. Other than that, thank you so much for listening and hope you have a great day.